It wasn't exactly a typical weekend, but I wasn't expecting it to be as memorable and traumatic as it was. At the time I was a programmer, helping to develop a new English learning app for a company, and being fluent in both English and Portuguese made me an ideal candidate for the job. Fortunately, I was allowed to work remotely from Sao Paulo, so I didn't have to visit Rio very often, however, the company wanted me to meet the rest of the team, so I was obligated to go. The tourist hotspots in Rio are nice, but also very expensive and can be easy targets for dangerous criminals. I guess they figured out that robbing foreigners is more profitable than robbing the locals. The hotel I decided to stay at was shabby and quite far from the city centre, but it was affordable and definitely low key. There wasn't that much security so pretty much anyone could walk in and out at any time, but I wasn't too worried since I was only planning to stay there for one night, and I was travelling very light. Despite the relatively short flight from Sao Paulo to Rio, I was already feeling tired but just as I was about to recharge my phone and head on to bed, I received an unexpected call on the landline phone. Now I don't know about anyone else, but when answering a call from a stranger, I prefer to just stay quiet and let them do the talking and just hang up if I decide it's a conversation not worth having. So I picked up the phone and waited silently on the line. Eu sei onde você está. Se você tenta sair do seu quarto, você vai morrer. Before I had a chance to hang up, the call already ended abruptly, leaving me in a state of fear and confusion. I didn't really know whether I should stay put or go somewhere else, somewhere crowded. Either way, I didn't feel that I had enough time to call the police and explain what was going on, or if they would even be able to respond in time. I began to suspect that perhaps someone spotted me at the airport and followed me to the hotel. But why the threatening phone call? Why not just go directly to my room? The more time I spent thinking about it, I felt increasingly less safe in the room by myself, but as I turned off the lights and headed to the door, I heard a scream followed by a commotion coming from the hallway. I stepped away from the door and hid behind the bed as I observed shadows beneath the door that appeared to show people desperately running for the exit. Suddenly the screams turned to panic as a man started yelling and cursing like an insane person. <laughs> and once again I could see shadows quickly passing beneath the door, but this time they were oddly heading away from the exit. I remember there was an intense moment of silence before eventually someone began violently banging and kicking against the door, desperately trying to force their way in. <laughs> At that point I was convinced that it was only a matter of time before the door would eventually break down, but to my relief, everything went quiet and I could no longer see the shadow of anyone standing behind the door. It felt too soon to enter the hallway, something didn't feel right, as if the crazy tormented person was still out there, waiting. I tried to contact the clerk at the front desk of the hotel to find out what was going on, but the phone there was off the hook for some reason. It seemed like the only thing left to do was to call the police, but suddenly the fire alarm began sounding off, and I could hear a steady flow of footsteps hurling down the corridor. I eventually managed to rack up the courage to vacate my room and head down to the small lobby. By the time the police arrived, everyone, myself included, had already spilled out onto the streets after hearing the fire alarm and there was still a strong sense of panic and confusion in the air. The police searched the hotel, but there was no sign of the man or any clues as to what scared him off or who set off the fire alarm. According to what I overheard from fellow tourists and hotel staff, about a dozen people had all vacated their rooms and scrambled onto the roof to avoid a man with a knife. Apparently he was looking for someone, but since he didn't know which room they were staying at, he assaulted the clerk at the front desk and began calling all of the rooms. I consider myself very lucky that the door to my room didn't give in and for whatever reason he gave up when he did. I haven't been back to Rio since but it was definitely an experience that I'll never forget and I sincerely hope that the crazy man with the knife was found and is no longer a threat to anyone. <laughs>